Though I'm not in my usual podcasting room, it's still a Friday, and it's time to answer some questions from our mailbag next on Locked on Royals. You are Locked on Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I am your host, Jack Johnson. You can follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. You also can catch us on wherever you get your podcasts. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. We're on Odyssey and we're on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Though the college basketball season is over, NBA, NHL, Golf right now, the Masters going on, and of course, baseball all in full swing. So head over to FanDuel, create your account, and start winning some big time money. And we got more on them coming up later on in the show. And we're going to give you a code when you sign up so you can make your payout even bigger. But again, we'll talk about that later on in today's show. If you're a first time listener, of course, welcome in. We love new listeners here on the Lockdown Royals channel. And if you want to know a little bit more about me, I'm based here in Kansas City, I'm actually here at work. Uh, having to do the podcast, didn't have time this morning to do it from my usual spot. So I decided to go on the fly here instead of waiting to do it after work and, and try to get it done before the Mets game, which was going to be nearly impossible by the time I get off. Um, I decided to do it during the afternoon and find a little studio in here to do the podcast. So yes, I am at work. This is where I usually am most of the day and have to do the podcast either before or after I come into the studio. But yes, that is more on me. If you are that first time listener and I'm based here, I, I love sports. It, it basically revolves around my life. I really enjoy doing it. But when you come in here and you click on this podcast link, when you watch on YouTube or if it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it may be, you know that you were getting 30 straight minutes of Royals baseball. And what a perfect first episode for you to tune into because it is a Friday. It is a mailbag Friday where basically this entire show is run by the listeners. We got about 20 or so questions to get into today. Don't want to waste any time on that. So let's get into question number one, which comes from, looks like here, this is from... Chris, I believe, is question number one. He asks, are Adam Fraser's struggle physical or mental? Or his struggles are physical or mental? Um, I think it's more of just ability. I think that when you're a veteran like him, you're in your 30s, you've been around for a long time, you are a former all-star. The mental strain of baseball, you've probably learned to adapt uh, to or you've learned to live with. So to me, I think it's more so of ability. And he's also a guy that was signed to be a depth piece. He wasn't signed to be a starter. The Royals are likely getting Michael Massey back soon. Don't know if that would be before the White Sox series. He always tears up the White Sox, so maybe that would be the perfect time to bring him back instead of at some point in the Mets series, or it'd be the next homestand, which begins next weekend, actually seven days from today, one week, where they take on the Baltimore Orioles once again. But Adam Frazier, he's a depth piece, right? He is not somebody... Uh, that you're expecting to start for 162 games. That's, I think, we're more so seeing. The struggles are because of ability, not so much mental. I think that's more so for younger players in an everyday lineup. Jonathan asks, we have a good idea at who's doing well. Who is the most underrated Royal at the moment or the most underrated group? I think the most underrated guy at this point in time would probably be John Schreiber to me. John Schreiber has been the fireman for the bullpen, and I think he's the guy that sparked. Uh, the success of the bullpen on the homestand. Their ERA was sub one uh, over those seven games. They seem to have found their rhythm. They got their confidence back. And, and he's one of those guys I feel like the younger pitchers can turn to in the bullpen of, hey, he's done this before. He's done it uh, very successfully. Uh, maybe I could also give that nod to James MacArthur, who took the closers role from Will Smith. Everybody really had a hand in there. And so if I had to say an underrated group, right now it's the bullpen because they were so bad to begin the year. Now they've hit their stride, and I think one of the main reasons of that was because of John Shriver's start to 2024. Jason asks, what is your realistic expectation for the season after this start? Can we win the division or snag a wild card? What does this evening out look like? I think that the ceiling of this team is winning the division. Um, not trying to overreact to a 13-game sample size, but I do feel like when you look at this lineup, you look at the rotation, you look at the bullpen, and even when they even out, 
I think they're going to have a chance to win this division. I'm just not as high on the Central. You know, Cleveland is still in first place by a half game over Kansas City. I don't expect the standings to look like that when it's all said and done. I think that Minnesota is going to make a strong push when they're healthier and their bullpen gets healthier. I think Detroit's offense is going to get a little bit better, which puts them in a good spot. Cleveland, I think, is actually going to regress a little bit. I just don't really buy into their offense that much. I like Stephen Kwan, like Jose Ramirez and Josh Naylor. I just I'm not as high on the other guys in that part of the lineup. And they're also dealing with injuries in the rotation as well. But I, I do think that the ceiling is winning this division. The realistic expectation, I think that they are competitive uh, for 90 percent of this season. I think I'll put it at that and maybe September not being able to go all the way. But this start, I think there is something to it. They really have a lot of nice pieces in place. If you want to really dream big, it looks a little bit like what Arizona was last year. You know, Arizona had their star in Corbin Carroll and then just really good pieces that fit around him. The rotation stabilized. The bullpen was much better than Kansas City's, but they found a way to start hot. And it was really because a lot of those young pieces started forming together. And when you get out to a hot start, it gives you some buffer room for when you do hit a little bit of a slump, which is bound to happen at some point this season. But those are where my expectations are at right now. That's where they really seem to be after these first 13 games. Next question comes from Ballistic Boobage. Will we ever lose again? Likely, even though right now it doesn't feel like the Royals are going to lose a game. They are playing some really good baseball, the best run differential in all of the sport. But I'd imagine on this road trip, they do falter at least one time. I'd imagine it does happen in this Mets series just because the Mets are playing really good baseball right now. They were 0-5 to start the year and are 5-2 and since. So you were catching them at a bad time, unlike what you caught the Astros at, uh, which was a really poor point of their season where they were really struggling. Although they did uh, win the last two games, I think, in Arlington before coming to Kansas City, and the Royals just swept them out of Kauffman Stadium. The Mets, uh, they're coming off a 16-run output against the Atlanta Braves, so their offense is playing some really good baseball, but should be a really fun series. But yes, to answer your question, I'd imagine they do lose at least once on this road trip, even though one of these series features the Chicago White Sox. Nick asks, I love your podcast and appreciate you opening up an opportunity for questions. Obviously, everyone has placed an emphasis on the players, rightfully so, but what do you think Q is doing well this season? How have you seen him progress and improve as a manager early this year? The big part about this is the Royals have more talent, right? If we were going to judge Mac Wichero on year one, we had to factor in that the team just was terrible. Uh, there wasn't many guys that were proven. They were putting a lot of pressure on guys that just aren't major league players. And this year, you've found a better rotation. You've got a better bullpen. The lineup has more pop. It's got a higher ceiling. And that makes it easier on a manager uh, to manage these games. And I think that really is important for a team like this one. Now, we know that he loves substitutions. He loves playing a lot of a lot of different guys in a lot of different spots. I think that in this winning streak, he's handled the bullpen really well, of going to certain guys in big spots. Angel Serpa has kind of emerged as that lefty specialist. He's gone to him a few times in big spots, and now he's got the confidence. He gave James McCarthy the closers role, had the quick hook on Will Smith in game two of that series against Chicago on the homestand. That, I think, set the tone that they're not just going to let guys go out there and wear it. You know, so I think the bullpen management has really been good for Matt Quattrero over the course of this seven-game winning streak. As for the lineup, it's easy when the lineup is playing like this. But so far, I think that his success is also because this team is much better uh, than last year's squad. Next question comes from John. What do you expect the Royals to do against the Mets? They won two of three from the Braves and beat them 16-4 to four and 8-7 to seven in their two wins. I expect the Royals can grab... At minimum one in this series, I like their matchup against Luis Severino tonight. Michael Walker on the bump. Uh, that's a revenge game for him. He was not very good, not very good as a member of the Mets. So he gets a chance to shove tonight against his former team in Queens. Uh, Sean Manai has always been tough on the Royals. At least it feels like it. So I don't like that matchup. And then I'm going to take Cole Reagans against the field on Sunday. So I expect them to take two or three against the Mets and then head on to Chicago and maybe sweep the White Sox again. But you can't sweep everybody, even if your team is red hot, it, at least. It feels like that, but we just have to be realistic at some times. Beating a team seven times in April would be mighty impressive for the Royals. But just looking at this Mets series, I like the matchup tonight. I like the matchup on Sunday. Not too high on the Alec Marsh versus Sean Manaya game on Saturday. So hoping for taking two out of three. Uh, wouldn't be disappointed by just taking one because you are 
10 and six at that point going into the Chicago series. Don't envision them getting swept. They're playing too good right now. And the Mets, even though they're hot, they still have their problems, I think, with the rotation and being a little bit banged up. Okay, we're going to take our first break of the show. When we come back, we've got plenty of more questions to get into on our Mailbag Friday. That's coming up on Lockdown Royals. You are tuned into Lockdown Royals on the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. Before we go any further, want to give a shout out to one of the sponsors today in Ibotta. Spring has sprung, and that means spring cleaning. Whether that means stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for new spring clothes, make sure you're using Ibotta and get real cash back with every purchase. Spring is here, so it's out with the old and in with the new. But don't splurge on anything new without getting cash back in return when you are using Ibotta. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 for just trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. Let's continue answering questions from the listener in our Mailbag Friday segment. And up next is Aiden, who asks, how much has this team surprised you in the first 13 games? Really, really surprised me. If you remember my projection back near opening day, or it might have been in that first series, I said that if the Royals can go 14 and 18 in their first 32 games, I'd be very satisfied because you are playing a lot of playoff teams from last year. And their first four series, three of them have been against division champions from 2023. And when you walk away on a seven game winning streak, you're nine and four. The rotation has been electric. The offense has been really good. How can you not be surprised by this team? I mean, my jaw is on the floor, even with a nine and four record. But I'll tell you this. Nine and four is fantastic. They are much better than what their record is showing right now. Of course, having the best run differential in baseball. And now I look at that 14 and 18 bare minimum. That's going five and 14 the rest of the way. I think they are going to be better than five and 14 over their next couple of series, which puts them likely ahead of 500 at the end of April, which is a great goal to have. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but curious what they look like against the Mets in this series. Not really worried what they look look like against Chicago. But then very excited for that series against the Baltimore Orioles. They'll be done with Baltimore, which is a great thing, in the month of April. Hoping for a big crowd when the boys in blue return to Kauffman Stadium next weekend. This question comes from Jason. Besides Reagans, who's your favorite pitcher to watch so far? I'm going with Lugo. Love a control pitcher with good movement. To be honest with you, I love watching Michael Walker pitch. I think Michael Walker's changeup is a thing of beauty. Uh, His velocity seems to have jumped up a little bit. He's just so poised. He's a seasoned veteran. He's fun to watch. And and he's somebody that I think can really replicate what he did last year in San Diego, which was a low 3.2 ERA. Didn't throw a ton of innings, but I expect the Royals want him to go closer to 140, 150, maybe at best getting 160 to 170. Uh, But he's my favorite pitcher to watch, mainly because of that changeup. But you can't go wrong with Seth Lugo either, who has three quality starts in his first three starts as a member of of the Royals. Next question comes from Ben. Uh, what is your updated win total now for the boys in blue? I'll set the over under at 125 and a half wins. Realistically, I think I would set it at what Fangraphs has that. It'd be at 80, I think, right now. So I believe the Fangraphs projection is 81 and 81. Um, I think that if you can go anywhere from 78 and a half to 80 and a half, I think that's really, really good. Uh, that's probably where I'll put it at right now. I think that'd be a fun bet to make with just your friends of of 80 and a half. If you can get over that, you're talking about a 500 season, a little bit under, you're, fall, you're falling just short of it. But that, I think, is where I'd put it at. But shoot for the moon, 120. Uh, maybe they can shatter the Major League Baseball record for wins in a season. Uh, JHB asks if they need help in the rotation and bullpen from the minors. Who comes up? Uh, I'm not really high on anybody in the rotation right now. I don't think there's somebody in Omaha that really moves the needle for me. I like the five they have. If somebody were to get banged up or hurt, it'd probably be on Hell Serpa or Jordan Lyles taking that spot in the rotation, with Jordan Lyles being the front runner, is my guess. Uh, in the bullpen, though, there are a couple of guys I like. Love Will Klein. Uh, Will Klein has an electric fastball. He's somebody that I think can easily play at, at the big league level. John McMillan, when he's healthy, <clears throat> John McMillan, when he's healthy, is somebody that can 
take over the, the setup spot or maybe even the closer's role if James MacArthur doesn't run away with it. But the velocity is not there right now. Carlos Hernandez coming back soon. Uh, Walter Pennington is a lefty. I just love everything he's done in spring training and the beginning part of the year in Omaha. He's a big strikeout pitcher. And even though he's not an upper 90s guy, good control, good off-speed pitches, those four to me feel like the likeliest candidates. Then on the outside looking in, Dan Altavia, who was a minor league deal guy in camp, Sam Long as well. He's been great in Omaha. He might also challenge Walter Pennington at some point to be the first lefty called up from Omaha. And then Steven Cruz. We all know with the electric triple-digit fastball, but he hasn't been that great to begin the year in Omaha. But those are some of my options out of the bullpen to help the team this year. Tyler asked, you're probably going to get several questions about this, but thoughts on Vinny's breakout these past two games? I feel like he just needed the game these past two to get back to his regular stuff. Absolutely. Um Vinny Pasquantino was somebody I wasn't really worried about. I knew that if it just was one game for him, if it was just a bleeder, just a, a bloop double or something like that, he was going to get going. And boy, has he gotten going. Eight RBIs in the last two games. He's raised his batting average by 119 points, I think it is. I mean, just absolutely ridiculous stuff from the Royals' first baseman. And now the first six guys in the lineup are all hitting well. And it shows you what this offense can do when you hang nine runs in the first inning against a very serviceable pitcher in Hunter Brown. But yeah, you're exactly right, Tyler. He was going to get going at some point, and it looks like it's coming at the right time with the offense clicking. Uh, Muni Euro, I think that's how you say it, or Salmon Muni Euro. I apologize if I didn't pronounce that correctly. I'm kind of going on the fly here. I know this recent streak isn't sustainable, but the team seems to be firing on all cylinders right now. For you, what's been the biggest surprise? The lineup, the starting rotation, and the fairly solid bullpen. I'm going to go with uh, the lineup has surprised me a little bit. Knew the rotation would stabilize a bit, but the lineup hitting the way they are, it's just so much fun to watch. Velasquez and, and MJ Melendez and Vinny Pasquantino just uh, really surprising me in a big way over the last couple of weeks, or more so Vinny the last two games. Bobby Wood Jr., I knew he was going to be special. Michael Garcia knew he was going to look like this. Salvi uh, bouncing back early on has just been phenomenal to see. And then you have guys at the bottom of the order. Kyle Isbell has been just fine. He's been okay. And when you have elite defense in center field, that's going to play. Hunter Renfro's on a six-game winning streak, so you can't really complain too much about that. Okay, the next question we got is from S. New. Given that the new stadium vote went down in flames, do you think the Royals would spend at the trading deadline if they're in contention? What do you think the Royals would spend the trading deadline if they're in contention? Attendance has been pretty bad so far. They've been losing money this year. Um, If they were in serious contention, I think we talked about this last Friday. If they were in serious contention, I, I think they would stick with what they had. They might add a bullpen arm or a few, really. Um, but still, at this point, it's tough to tell because you don't know where the true weakness will be at that point, and you don't know what injuries uh, that you may be dealing with. So right now, um, it does feel like you know, attendance isn't great, but I could also see it surging next homestand. Uh, if the Royals just go four and two on this road trip, or even three and three, I think it should be a pretty big crowd uh, for the Baltimore Royals next coming weekend. So I would probably judge the attendance more so on uh, what we could get uh, over the road trip and, and probably what we could get over the summer. That, that feels like the best time to truly estimate just how good or bad the attendance will be all season long. Next question comes from Cameron. Do you think there is any possibility that Massey slows this team down when he comes back? And do you think that he immediately brings more value to the team over Frazier and Lofton? I do think Michael Massey is the best second base option they've got right now and moving forward. Nick Lofton, I think, does have a good future, but right now I'm just not sure he is the guy. And Adam Frazier was brought in for depth piece. We talked about that earlier on uh, in the show. So uh, to me, I do feel like Michael Massey is the best option. I think he's got the most pop in his bat. I also think he's the best fielder of the bunch. So I don't think he's going to slow down anything with this offense. If anything, I believe that he boosts them. Mike asks, why hasn't Frank Mozzicato pitched yet? I haven't been too uh, in-depth with that just yet on the season. Um, Preston Farr is a great person to follow for all Royals minor league updates and stuff like that. He could just be later in the rotation. Um, I know Columbia is a couple of games into the season, so he would be a better person to maybe get a true evaluation of. But I know that you know Frank Mozzicato, at least to our knowledge, hasn't had any setback or injuries like that, but they do keep prospect stuff pretty much under the radar. But Preston's a great follow for all things Royals minor league stuff. Nick asks, what was Vinny's nickname prior? And if not, if it's not already, can we refer to him as Pasquatch from here on out? Yeah, Pasquatch has seemed to be the nickname that has taken off with him, so I'd imagine that'll be it moving forward. It was the Italian nightmare and Italian breakfast before that, but none of those really stuck. Pasquatch, because they've got a Sasquatch on the Royals Hall of Fame, now seems to be the nickname that is going to stick. Uh, next question comes from T. Lest. What's a realistic, realistic expectation for an end of April record after the 9-4 and four start? 
I think it would be how many games is that? 29 or 30, let's say roughly a ballpark of 30 games, maybe 28 games. I think if the Royals can get to 16 and 12, I think that'd be a good mark. Um, I'd also take, you know, 17 and 11 would be pretty nice at this point. But those, I, I think, would be the good numbers for an overall April month. Uh, anytime you have a winning month at any point in the baseball season, you'll take it. But where they've started right now, if they can just hover around five or six games above 500, that feels pretty, pretty realistic at this point in time. Uh, Big D says, is it sustainable for or just another 2021? I think it is sustainable. Maybe not to this max extent. But also the the 2021 team had a negative run differential at the end of April. We've talked about that a few times. I don't see this team having a negative run differential by the end of April. I think they are much more equipped to sustain this throughout the summer. Charles asks, what are your thoughts on Matt Sauer for a Rule 5 draft pick? I feel like he's done about the best he could. Absolutely. He's pitching in blowouts right now. We'll see when he gets thrust into a high leverage spot. But to me right now, it does feel like that he's just doing his job. He's the long relief guy. And he hasn't given up a run so far, so tip my cap to Matt Sauer. I talked with him a little bit in spring training, and he seems like a guy that uh, really that you want to have around the clubhouse. He's an easy guy to root for, and I think he's got stuff that can play at this level. So, yeah, for a Rule 5 pick, he's doing everything he can to stay on this roster. And lastly, Austin asks, is it 100% loft and goes to Omaha when Michael Massey is done with his rehab stint? Not 100%, but I do think it's, it's above 70% at this point, uh, just because Nick Lofton was – the guy that got on the roster because of Michael Massey's injury. And with Hampson and Frazier both being on major league deals, they signed in the offseason to come in here as depth. I don't see that they're going to be going down to Omaha or outright DFA. So it's probably going to be Nick Lofton at this point. Okay, that's going to do it for our Mailbag Friday. Thank you for all the questions that were brought in by the listeners. And we're going to be doing the same thing one week from now. But before we move on to our final segment, let's give a shout out to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, let's take a quick deep dive into this series preview against the Mets next on Locked On Royals. You are tuned into Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can always follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 1-5. Before we go any further, want to give a shout out to the title sponsor today in FanDuel. And even though the college basketball season is over, you need to head over to FanDuel today because they've got a great deal going, or at least we have a great deal going for you. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. But on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, real quickly, I want to preview this upcoming series against the New York Mets. I already stated uh, in the Mailbag Friday segment that I believe the Royals can probably take two in this series. I like the matchup tonight, Michael Walker and Luis Severino. Not too high on the Alec Marsh versus Sean Manea game on Saturday, uh, but I do like Cole Reagans against the field on Sunday. So you got two guys that I really think are in good positions to win this game, to hold down this suddenly red-hot offense of the New York Mets. And I think it's a perfect time to play a team like the Mets. You know, with the Astros, you take a sweep anytime you can get a sweep. But also, it was an Astros team that is a little bit banged up. They weren't playing their best ball. I'm excited to see this team play a, a New York Mets team that's not where they were two weeks ago, which two weeks ago they were 0-5 or 0-6, whatever it is. They've played some really good baseball of late. They went into Truist Park in Atlanta and scored 16 runs in the series finale. They won 16 to four and won eight to seven, and honestly should have won game one. They blew that game uh, in the early part of that series in Atlanta. So they are playing really good baseball. Anytime you can take a series from a team like the Atlanta Braves, you are riding high. And it feels very similar uh, to what the series was in Baltimore. Baltimore was coming off just a drubbing, uh, or they had been drubbing the Los Angeles Angels, though the Angels did escape with that series finale victory which I guess sent them a little bit uh, back down to earth. But overall, that Orioles team was playing well after their first series of the year. With this Mets team, you're going to be tested by a good offense, an offense that's playing well right now. The Mets haven't been good at home. Uh, maybe it's the pressure of playing in front of their fans who can uh, certainly turn into boo birds at any given point in time. But it's interleague play. 
Uh, the Royals haven't been to City Field, I think, since 2016 is my best guess there. It's been a while since the Royals have been there. Might have been 2017 now that I think about it. But this is a good test for them. It's a good road test. You got the White Sox to begin next week. So the Mets are that team that really feel like, you know, if you want to prove that you are still riding high, you can carry this win streak or just take another series, good team to do it against, right? Because if you walk away with two of three and you roll into that White Sox series, it's going to be hard to find any negative points about this baseball club right now. I, I mean, seriously, at the end of the day, uh, nobody in baseball is hotter than the Kansas City Royals. They're winners of seven in a row. They'll have a chance to make it eight tonight uh, against Luis Severino. I'm excited how Michael Walker will handle uh, not only playing his former team, but playing an offense that's as hot as they are right now. I mean, nobody uh, really wants to deal uh, with the New York Mets uh, coming off that 16-run output against the Atlanta Braves in the series finale. But I can tell you the Royals have confidence that they can just go and put them back to where they were two weeks ago. Um, Michael Walker, I think, is a really good pitching matchup. There's a lot of swing and miss in that Mets lineup, and that's going to bode well for not just Michael Walker, but I would say Cole Reagans as well. I mean, Cole Reagans was great in his last road start against Baltimore. Crappy conditions. I actually haven't seen the conditions for New York this week. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath that it's going to be in the high 70s and 80s, and you're dealing with beautiful summertime weather, but I do think that they're going to have good enough weather uh, for this three-game set against the New York Mets. A rematch of the 2015 World Series in which the Royals won that in five games. We all remember that very, very well. And there's been a lot of uh, paying homage, paying tribute to the 2015 team with the seven-game winning streak and the best start, uh, or I think the same exact start it was, the 2015 team had at 9-4. and four. So I, I know that we all are riding high. We're feeling good about this team. But first things first, got to take game one tonight in New York and try to take the series against a red-hot Mets team. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of Lockdown Royals and the Lockdown Podcast Network. I've been your host, Jack Johnson. You can always follow me on Twitter, X, at JohnnyJ underscore 15. One last shout-out to Lockdown Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. Will you enjoy a fun series this weekend? Hopefully a fun series. We'll have plenty of recap on Monday and preview that White Sox series. But until then, you take it easy, Kansas City.